Hello. Uh, today we will be discussing about the micro environmental effects of uh, the immobilization of enzymes over the enzymes. So, in uh, as we can see, the micro environmental effects, as the name suggests, it will be something pertaining to the environment of the enzyme, and of course, the enzyme activity depends upon the availability of the substrate to it and the dispersal of the product from near its surface. So uh, in case of immobilized enzymes, since there is uh, an additional major factor that is the support on which the enzyme is immobilized or you can say uh, by whatever method the enzyme is immobilized, uh, there is a subsequent change in the micro environment of the enzyme due to that immobilization process so uh, what are uh, whatever be our immobilization process the micro environmental effects might be due to two reasons as discussed earlier it might be due to the partitioning of the substrate the partitioning of the substrate between the bulk and the microenvironment of the enzyme and the other might be due to mass transfer limitations or mass transfer hindrance or diffusional limitations there are various terms that we can call it and uh, <coughs> partition effects is might arise due to the nature of or you can say more uh, correctly the difference in the properties partition effect may arise due to the difference in properties of the bulk medium substrate and the support or our immobilization method the nature of our immobilization method So generally partition of any substrate between two phases is simply a ratio of the concentration of the substrate between the two phases. So here we can write it as partition effect of the substrate or partition coefficient. The partition coefficient it can the partition effect can be defined by the partition uh, coefficient. Uh, which is uh, the ratio of the substrate concentration at the surface or at the support or in the micro environment of the enzyme to the bulk substrate concentration okay whereas mass transfer limitations can again be of two types The simple one is the external diffusional restrictions or limitations, the restrictions, limitations, or the second one is internal diffusional restrictions the external diffusional restrictions is the diffusional restriction due to the stagnant film 
by the two film theory as we know that uh, above any solid matrix or support there exists a stagnant film of the bulk medium so there uh, this due to the stagnant nature of this bulk uh, uh, this fluid this layer this film <coughs> sorry due to the stagnant nature of this uh, film mass transfer within this film uh, becomes very difficult and thus it imposes certain amount of diffusional restrictions we call it as external diffusional restrictions that is over the surface of the support if this is our matrix or support then if i can uh, write it down as edr in abbreviated form then this layer would impose edr because this is a stagnant film stagnant film of the surrounding medium of the surrounding medium the composition of this stagnant film might differ might differ due to the partition effect than the bulk medium the composition of this stagnant film might be different from that of the bulk medium for instance if the matrix is uh, charged suppose it is charged and it has a net uh, positive charge on over it or a net negative charge whatever uh, the case may be let's assume it has a net negative charge over it so it will attract all the positive ions towards it and if our substrate is a positive uh, has a slight positive charge if our substrate has a slight positive charge so it will get attracted to the matrix and support and eventually it will come closer to the enzyme which is very beneficial for us similarly another major effect that partition effect has and uh, due to the nature of the matrix or support is that if it is negatively charged it will attract the positive ions and if the medium is aqueous then of course we are going to have h plus ions the protons and if we have uh, a higher amount of h plus ions over the matrix just over the matrix in the stagnant film then that means that we have <coughs> a higher acidic nature a lower ph a lower ph within our stagnant film so as we all know that enzymes have an optimum ph at which it, uh, they perform at its maximum velocity at which it gives its maximum performance so in case of immobilized enzymes because since when we will monitor the ph we will be monitoring the ph in the bulk environment but when we study uh, enzyme kinetics or we uh, study the ph uh, dependence or ph behavior of the um, immobilized enzyme we get a different value a different optimum value than that of the free enzyme so this is the primary reason and if we uh, know beforehand the nature of the matrix we can reduce the number of experiments required to reach the optimum value of the bulk uh, ph to obtain maximum enzyme activity so this is the case of external diffusion resistance uh, it it gets it gets increased as the as the thickness of this film increases we will be seeing the relationships in a few minutes and secondly the internal diffusion restrictions if i can abbreviate it as idr internal diffusional restrictions then internal diffusional restrictions arise when our support is porous in nature it has pores within its body the pores can be micro porous uh, of very small thickness but it should be enough for the enzyme to integrate and get immobilized uh, but we prefer uh, meso or macro porous matrix or supports to allow 
is in mass transfer uh, mass transfer of the substrate so no matter how much uh, macroporous we make it or mesoporous we make it but if it is uh, enough porous so that the bulk medium also can enter it because we are going to have a thin film surrounding all the sur surfaces of the porous support also but if the pore size is so much that we can have a, a thin film uh, along with movement of the medium the surrounding medium within the porous uh, within the pores of the matrix or support then uh, mass transfer limitations could be reduced but normally if the pores are small then we will have a stagnant outer film this will be our stagnant layer and within these pores the movement will be further decreased there will be no little or no movement within these pores so uh, the movement is so much minimized that it offers the maximum hindrance in the enzymatic reactions for the immobilized enzymes it offers maximum hindrance for the performance of the immobilized enzymes and hence therefore we get a substrate profile if we have a porous support then at the surface at the thin film we have a particular substrate concentration like if this is my axis and if i say that this is my this is the radius from the center and this is my substrate concentration if i want to draw my substrate profile then the substrate concentration would be maximum at the interface it will gradually reduce till it reaches the surface it will be a curve like pattern and then at the surface from the surface into the pores if you move inside then we will gradually have again a lower amount of substrate and this could be even zero this could whatever the case might be this could even reach zero before reaching the center of the matrix so uh, the internal restrictions are very high than the external diffusion restrictions okay we'll have our external diffusion restrictions outside the support and inside the pores of the porous support we will have internal diffusion restrictions so now we will start with our partition effect okay so now we will have a look at the partition effect so if we have a support or matrix we have a stationary film a stagnant stationary film stationary film of the surrounding medium of the surrounding medium so we will have a bulk substrate concentration if our enzyme is immobilized within it so we have a bulk substrate concentration and we have a surface substrate concentration substrate concentration available this is the substrate concentration available to the enzyme <clears throat> so uh, this is known as the partitioning of the substrate and this is due to as discussed earlier due to the nature of this substrate and the support or matrix as well as the environment of the medium or the nature of the medium so all three factors would contribute in the partitioning of the substrate between 
the stagnant film and the bulk medium this will be our bulk medium so in general terms uh, partitioning partitioning of any particular substance between two phases is given by uh, a ratio which we call it as partition coefficient so in this case it is concentration of substrate at the surface to the concentration of the substrate in the bulk medium for a charge support for a charge support goldstein proposed an equation goldstein in 1976 proposed a relationship a relationship between the partition coefficient and the different parameters of the support and that is he gave the following relationship that it is equal to exponent of minus negative the atomic number or you can say the charge the dielectric constant and the surface potential upon the boltzmann constant and the temperature at which the measurements are being done so like in our example of a charged support um, <clears throat> there can be two types of cases if the nature of the substrate or the charge of the substrate is of the same type as the net charge of our support then what would happen if if charge of substrate is same as charge on support then eventually we will have a condition in which the substrate concentration at the surface would be The, the substrate would get, of course, repelled from the support. So, if it gets repelled from the support, then the concentration of substrate would be less than that in the bulk medium. Okay. And similarly, if the charge, if if I represent charge as Q, like we normally do in uh, physics, so the charge on substrate is opposite. to that of charge on support then we get a condition that is favorable to us and we will have a higher substrate concentration so we will have a higher substrate con concentration than in our bulk medium so this case is very favorable and this is the advantage of immobilizing the enzymes this is how we are improving the enzymatic reaction so sometimes uh, when we perform the enzymatic reaction we see that at a low substrate concentration we get our maximum enzyme velocity so this is one of the reasons why we get such results 
and another most interesting thing that I have already discussed, but let me discuss it using this equation is the pH dependence. The pH dependence, as I've discussed, that it be, the optimum pH of the enzyme gets changed once it is immobilized. So the immobilization was observed to change the optimum pH and even temperature requirements of the enzyme. So uh, by this equation, we can have a slight explanation to it that if we see the partitioning of H plus ions then we have H plus ions at the surface and H plus ions in the bulk medium and this is again given by the equation of Goldstein the atomic number for uh, protons will be 1 so the equation will get reduced to So I hope uh, you have understood the different terms. If not, we'll write it down here. Okay. Uh, in the Goldstein's equation, Z was number of uh, number of electronic charges. Or simply we can uh, call it as charge okay amount of charge okay amount of charge amount of charge then we have the dielectric constant of the medium then we have the average electrostatic potential of the support electrostatic potential of the support KB is Boltzmann constant Boltzmann constant and T is absolute temperature So now if you solve this equation, so now if we solve it, uh, we can uh, take these two uh, equations, these two terms of the equation. So this equation which we are going to solve will be exponent can be written as e to the power minus epsilon pi upon kb t okay. this is e raised to the power of this term so if we take a natural logarithm on both sides taking 
natural logarithm which we write as ln on both sides we have we get natural logarithm of h plus ion at the surface upon h plus ion in the bulk substrate concentration and this will be equal to natural logarithm of e raised to the power of minus epsilon pi upon kb t now on <coughs> further solving it we will get i'll solve it here down now exponent of uh, a logarithm can be written at this place and we will have natural logarithm of e we know that we know that natural logarithm of e is equal to 1 so now our equation becomes natural log of h plus ion concentrations in the at the surface and in the bulk and this is now okay now we know that uh, our <coughs> by the definition of ph ph is the negative logarithm of h plus ion concentrations okay so uh, now we need to convert this natural logarithm into into log to the base 10 so uh, we know that to convert this we know that we know that 2.303 of log x to the base 10 is equal to natural log of x okay where x here is this ratio so that means that instead of ln we can write it as 2.303 log to the base 10 so the above equation becomes 2.303 log now log to the base 10 can also be written as log and the rest of the equation would be the same now i'll be using this part of the board <clears throat> now this becomes log H S plus at the surface, H plus ion at the surface, and H plus ion at the bulk, and epsilon phi upon 2.303 kb t. now this uh, logarithm in the form of division can be expanded and this would become logarithm of h plus ion concentration at the surface minus logarithm of h plus ion concentrations in the bulk okay and this will be equal to minus and 1 upon 
would come out to be approximately 0 0.43. We can calculate it using a calculator. 0 0.43. Approximately, we can write it as 0 0.43 epsilon phi upon kvt. Now, by the definition of pH, we need negative logarithm of both of both these terms. So, to get negative logarithm, we can multiply the whole equation by minus one. multiplying by minus 1. So we will get minus log hs plus. Now we can write it as minus minus log hb plus and this minus sign will vanish because minus 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 into minus is plus so it will be 0 0.43 epsilon phi upon kvt so now we have a better picture and we can write uh, this as minus log of h plus ion concentration at the surface so it, it will be ph at the surface minus minus log uh, H plus ion concentration in the bulk would be minus pH in the bulk solution and this will be equal to 0 0.43 epsilon for clarity I am rubbing this epsilon phi upon Boltzmann constant Kb into temperature at which the pH has been recorded. So we have a combined effect of the pH, the dielectric constant of the medium, the temperature of the surrounding medium and the surface potential of the matrix and of course the concentration of the H plus ion, the H plus ions as well as the nature of the H plus ion which was positive uh, because of which this effect is coming into play. So by this equation we can, if we know the bulk pH we can calculate and if in the bulk pH as well as the electrostatic potential of the substrate, the dielectric constant of the medium and the temperature we can easily come to know that. So we can calculate the pH at the surface of the support. So this is uh, all about partition effect and the effect of uh, the effect it has on pH which is the most important factor to be discussed because pH affects almost all enzymes because most of the enzymes are aqueous in nature they perform their activity in aqueous solutions so it is very important parameter the pH of the medium. So in next class we will be discussing and we will be discussing about the diffusional restrictions or the mass transfer limitations. Thank you.